It's the 10th of October, 2077, two weeks before the Great War, and Roger Maxson, captain of a U.S. Army Security Detachment at the Mariposa Military Base in California, sat at a terminal to record his thoughts. I have started this log because it doesn't look good for any of us, and I'd like for people to know what really happened here. All hell broke loose when we finally discovered what those scientist bastards were up to. The colonel has locked himself in his office, and seems to be having some sort of breakdown. The men are screaming for blood. They're looking to me for answers, and I'm not sure what to do. Someone has to do something, though, before this place sinks into an anarchistic bloodbath. The captain's discovery would set him and his troops on a course that would shape events across America, and in its fire would forge a new band of brothers, with a new purpose. This is Fallout History where we explore the stories behind some of the biggest events in Fallout history. I'm Lemons Rain, and this month we explore the foundation of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's a week later. The bloodbath Maxon has prophesied has come to pass. The blood, however, is on the captain's hands. Again, he tells his journal. I killed a man today. I was interrogating Chief Scientist Anderson, and he was giving me the full details of their inhuman experiments. He said his orders came from the government, but I didn't buy it. He started screaming about how he was following orders, how he was a military man, and I just shot him. I tell myself it was to keep him from causing a full mutiny among the men, and I'm not so sure. I tried again to speak to the colonel through the door, but he seems to have completely lost touch with reality. I broke the door down with several of the men just in time to watch him blow his head off. Right before he pulled the trigger, he said he was sorry. By killing the egghead, I seem to have confirmed my position as leader of the men. They follow me without question now. The interrogations invariably end up being executions. Shellman held out the longest, but the end result was the same. Her arguments about her orders were a bit too specific to be completely made up. I'm getting a real bad feeling in my gut about how this is all going to end up. I don't even lie to myself anymore about my reasons for executing the scientists. But what could possibly be so serious that it would turn a U.S. captain to cold-blooded murder? The answer? Human experimentation of the forced evolutionary virus. A project once intended to protect humanity from disease, instead reformulated to turn people into super-soldiers. These volunteers, if they were volunteers at all, would be transformed into abject horrors, yet their creators, those performing the experiments, would justify their actions as merely following orders from those above them. But killing the scientists would not be enough. What of those who gave the orders? I finally replied to the outside world over our radio. I don't know why they never sent anyone here to see what was happening when we stopped responding to their transmissions. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they'll come now. I declared ourselves seceded from the Union. They remember Jefferson Davis. What will history say about me? Maxson expected a swift response to their declaration. They were, after all, a U.S. military unit. Instead, he received silence for three whole days. Then, the Great War began. I can't believe those bastards finally did it. Damn them all to hell. They finally let the A-bombs fly. We were right in the middle of trying to pry the real story out of Von Felden when we completely lost contact. I have a feeling the research center was hit hard. I don't know why, just call it a gut feeling. It seems inconceivable that we were not targeted. I'm sure China will make up for that oversight real soon. Luckily, we had moved our families from outside into the facility the day before yesterday. We do not yet know if the fallout has reached this area. Fallout levels would remain low, and out of fear the facility may be targeted in the future, the decision was made to leave Mariposa for the Lost Hills bunker to the south. Although initially planning to set out on October 25th, they would not actually leave until October 27th. The Brotherhood would remember this event as the Exodus, a time of sadness, but also a time of hope. The Exodus from the accursed base was a trying time for the men and their families. Whilst there was no radioactive fallout to contend with, they were frequently beset by the fallout of humanity. Roving bands of psychotic marauders attempted several attacks on that noble group. 
the company itself was in no danger, for they wore the armour of power. Members of their family were not so lucky. Once the vermin found that they were easily repelled, they began to fire on the unarmed civilians from a distance. They took a great many casualties, yet for every member of the Exodus that was struck down in this way, our noble brethren took two lives from the wasteland. Finally, our forefathers came to the safety of the bunker. Captain Maxon, the great deliverer, decreed this to be our new home. And all was well. But moving was not enough. They needed a purpose. So Maxon set to give them and other surviving military units that purpose. What we need is purpose. But we cannot look to the America of old for that purpose. We have to build our own. So tonight, as we break bread together, let us forge together something new. Something strong. Something we can be proud of. Something we can build upon. We'll preserve what's best of what's come before and use it. And one day, we will reclaim what was lost. Let us forge a... Brotherhood of Steel. Maxon's hopes in this brotherhood would endure for centuries, but they all began with an act of rebellion that led to the foundation of the brotherhood. An act of rebellion that took place in the shadow of war in October 2077.